So as we said yesterday, this is the first time in my recollection that I ever, ever remember, and I believe I'm 100% certain when I say this, that no president ever came in to office on day one and proposed what Joe Biden is going to propose, an entire overhaul of our United States immigration laws. And it's going to start with a massive, massive amnesty program. Now, take everything I am saying with a grain of salt because we don't know what will ultimately pass. And I'll explain that in a second. But as far as the amnesty that Biden and Kamala Harris are going to propose, if you have TPS or you have DACA, you are going to be immediately eligible to adjust your status as a TPS member from any country or as a DACA recipient. All you got to do is prove you have DACA or TPS, obviously pass security checks, perhaps affidavits of support, perhaps some other requirements as well. I mean, we don't know the nitty gritty, but certainly members of those classes of people, DACA, TPS, will be eligible to adjust immediately. Anybody else who was physically present in the United States on New Year's Day, January 1st, 2021, and who was out of status on that day, will also, presuming they never left the United States, will also be eligible to change their status from out of status to some sort of lawful status, not having a green card, but some form of lawful status, perhaps work permission, perhaps travel permission, but not necessarily having a green card for five years. At the end of that five year period, this is Biden and Kamala's proposal. At the end of that five year period, presuming you are a person of good moral character and you have not committed any offenses that would make you ineligible to obtain a green card or inadmissible to the United States, and presuming that you would be able to support yourself 125% above the poverty level, you would then be eligible to adjust your status from this form of temporary status to having a green card. Then you would have to wait three years and assuming you continue to have good moral character, you permanently reside in the United States of America, you would then be eligible to file for your United States citizenship. Now, from assuming that this passes exactly as Biden is proposing it, but assuming it passes exactly as Biden is proposing, people who are going to be eligible for this form of amnesty ultimately will not get their citizenship in their hand probably till at least 11 or 12 years from now. Right. even though it is an eight year process because you have to have a process of going from nothing to temporary status that will take some time to process. So even though you may file a paperwork this spring, assuming the law passes, it may not be till next spring before you get something in your hand. Then you got to wait five years. Then you got to file an adjustment of status. You got to wait a period of time for that to adjust your status. You would just become eligible to do it. Then you adjust your status. That may take a year or two. And then you have to wait three years to file for citizenship and then file for citizenship. And that may take some time. Oh, so, man. I mean, ultimately it's going to be some form of 10 to 12 year period from nothing to U.S. passport in your hand. The good news is that it is going to be a massive, massive amnesty program. I want to talk about two points, Yo-Yo and Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Point number one is, what should I be doing right now? If I am part or believe I am going to be part of this amnesty program, which we don't know what it will be yet. 
because the other point I want to make is it's not going to be exactly what Biden says. It's going to change dramatically. But what we know now is you have to be physically present here out of status January 1st, 2021, which means that if you've now decided you're watching from Jamaica and you say, you know what, I'm going to swim for it or I'm going to be a stowaway. It's going to be too late for you. You had to be here by January 1st, 2021. So you're going to miss it. Okay. But Mm -hmm. if you were physically here on January 1st, 2021, that's what Biden is saying. What do you need to do? What I would be doing right now is saving every document that I have. Throw nothing away. If you learn anything today and you want to take advantage of law changes, you will not buy a garbage can. You will not buy garbage bags. You are going to be a hoarder. You are going to be hoard everything that you have. Every document that you have to prove that you were here. Bank statements, credit cards, photos, bills, library cards, medical bills, receipts from the gas station, receipts from the store, anything you have, junk mail that comes to you. You get some junk mail. Here's some coupon booklet that gets mailed to you in the mail. It has your name on it with a stamp on it. You save it. Why? Because you have to document that you were here. And you have to continuously document that you were here all the way through the time that you get some sort of legal status. Mm -hmm. So save every document, throw nothing out, be a hoarder. Get big box and just keep throwing stuff in it. Save all your mail, save all your documents. Everything that you have with your name, Every piece of mail you have, anything with a date on it, any contract you signed, anything with any provable value or any evidence to show that you were here. Now, that's what I would be doing right now. The other thing I would be doing is saying to myself, self, now that I heard that if this amnesty does come through, it's going to be a very, very long time before everybody gets through. If you have an opportunity to get a green card now, take advantage of it. Don't say I won't do it. I'll wait for Biden's amnesty because it's going to be an extraordinarily long period of time between the time the bill passes, millions of people file, you get something, then wait five years, then file an adjustment, then wait for that adjustment to be approved, then wait another three years to become a citizen. It will be a lot faster if you're in love and you, I'm just telling you, you're in love, you live with a person, much faster to adjust your status to a marriage and get your citizenship in three years. That's for sure. Now, with all Mm -hmm. of that being said, Yo-Yo and Vanessa, Mm -hmm. none of what Joe Biden is proposing is ultimately going to be the law. Now, the last time there was an amnesty that was attempted to be passed It was strictly just for the dreamers. The DREAM Act passed the Senate when President Obama was president. It passed the Senate by about 68 to 32. Then it was supposed to go to the House of Representatives that never voted on it because it was Republican. Now the House of Representatives is Democrat. Except, so you would say, okay, that's great now. So now they're definitely, we know the Senate passed it in 2014, 68 to 32. We have Democrats in the House. We got a president in the United States, except the Senate is much different than it was in 2014. Almost all of the Republicans who were pro-immigration have left the Senate or died. John McCain, dead. Flake, left. All of them left as a result of Donald Trump because Donald Trump took over the Republican party and all the moderate Republicans, many of them left. So who do we have left in the United States Senate right now are more staunch conservative Republicans who on their face, who knows how they'll ultimately vote or what they're gonna wanna vote for, but on their face will vote against any form of amnesty. 
Now, the Democrats, they basically win the vote 51 to 50. But that doesn't mean every Democrat in the Senate is going to want to pass immigration. Some Democrats come from very conservative states. Some Democrats are as conservative as some moderate Republicans. And there are some Republicans who come from states where there's a lot of immigration and they're pro-immigration. So there's going to be a lot of cross voting between Republicans and Democrats. And ultimately, because one, two, three, four senators can make the difference of whether a bill passes or not, one, two, three or four senators, because it's 51 to 50, Mm. One, two, three or four senators could hold up the whole thing for what they want, especially in the Senate. There's going to be a lot of changes to what Biden is saying. Perhaps they won't say January 1st, 2021. Perhaps they'll say January 1st, 1999. I have no idea. I don't know what they're going to do. Okay. All I know is that as somebody who has watched immigration laws being proposed, and then changed or die in Congress, the proposal and then those that actually pass, the proposal is never passed. It's changed a lot. But again, I believe something is going to happen. It's going to be extraordinarily positive. Save your documents because that is the only way you can prove that you were here. It's not going to be done based on, oh, I was here. Trust me. Here's an affidavit from my friend. They're not going to buy it save everything, throw nothing out. Meanwhile, inaugurations tomorrow, the Capitol is gonna be closed off. The National Mall is closed. They put up flags in the National Mall instead of people. The only people who are gonna be there are the politicians, Joe Biden and 25 National Guards troops. Pretty sad. Yeah. Sad inauguration for America that we have to lock up Washington, D.C combination of what happened on January 6th and, of course, COVID. Um, I know Trump is happy about that. Yeah. Exa- I was just going to make a comment on that. I was like, it's, it's almost as if it was done so Biden couldn't even right. have a good inauguration. It doesn't matter. I mean, think about it. If, if Trump called the people to go and storm the Capitol, he knows that, you know, it's so close to the inauguration. He knows that they're going to have to close it wouldn't recover. It's not going to be a real celebration. He's petty like that. Petty well, boots. Well, you know what? If I'm Joe Biden, I wouldn't care about the celebration. I'd care about what my legacy is going to be. And his legacy is not going to be, did I have a good inauguration? His legacy is going to be immigration, gun control, environmental control. As a matter of fact, Trump tried to unwind all of the environmental regulations that Obama put in. The Court of Appeals today overturned the Trump regulations, which means that Biden can now move forward on environmental reform, not from where Trump changed it, but from where Obama left off. Mm -hmm. So that's very positive news for people who are concerned about the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the temperature in which we live in our cities. I mean, I understand what you're saying with that, but I look at it as, you know, just like when I graduated from Howard, something happened to where I couldn't, they wouldn't let me walk because I I still had like to pay something. So I was like, well, I want to celebrate this with my people. I want to celebrate it with my friends, my family. So I don't know, it still would affect me, even especially Kamala. Like at least Biden has been to an inauguration where where a lot of people came to celebrate. Kamala hasn't. You know, so I think that it, it takes away from their their happiness, their, you know, chance to celebrate with their, their people. moment, so, especially her going to Howard University. I think she's going to use Howard's band to walk them down. But, you know, it's like she went to school there. I, I think she would have loved to see the D.C. Tonians bring her into office. I don't know. Maybe that's just me because I like to celebrate with my people. Well, let's talk about his inauguration <laughs> for a second. Okay. It's Mm -hmm. definitely going to look different than the other inaugurations we've seen in the past. But, you know, the DNC had a great convention and it was all virtual. Okay. So there's going to be no formalities involving the outgoing president, but he's going to have Lady Gaga perform. 
Jennifer Lopez perform. Kerry Washington is going to perform. Other participating performers include Tom Hanks. I don't, he's not going to sing, but maybe he'll give a speech. Foo Fighters, Bruce Springsteen, John Legend, Demi Lovato, Justin Timberlake, Lynn manuel Miranda. So there's going to be a lot of celebration, but it's going to be virtual, not in person. Does that make a difference to you? No. No. I mean, this is kind of part of what we're doing right now. 2021, we're in the midst of a pandemic. I'm more concerned about what he's going to do than whether he has a party or not, personally. But that's just me. You will never drink the tea until it's ready. <laughs> what do you think of this Melania? She's leaving this Melania. That's what I'm calling her now, this Melania. <laughs> This Melania. This Melania. That's what I'm but calling I, We knew exactly what you were referring to. We yeah. were like, tell us about the Melania. Yeah, let me tell you about this Melania. She's leaving. She's leaving the White House as the least popular first lady in the history of the United States. What? The, how does one the, vote the for his... the most popular? Like, how, how, how does this go? What, what, I don't, what are the I, I, I don't know. There's Ooh. a. I don't think there's a vote, but there's a poll. So there's, there's a poll. A, there's ah. a poll, and she's leaving as the least popular. And she's doing something extraordinarily rude that anybody who would really know how to be a lady would never do. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. has, for the first time, the first first lady ever. And this, this has gone back all the way to, to uh, former President Harry Truman in 1945, Bess Truman, his wife, would always have the future first lady over for some tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Give her a tour of the White House because she is the yes, first lady on. and she is the, the woman who will be taking, you know, let me show you this house. Let me show you how everything works, where everything works. You're coming to live in this home, this huge home you've never lived in before. She has refused to meet with Joe Biden. So refused? this is the first refused. So now it's a ritual. There's no requirement under the law yeah. for Melania to give Jill a tour and show her how everything works at the White House. But this is this has been being done since 1945 that the first lady would invite the new first lady in. The old first lady the would the first. outgoing first lady would invite the incoming new first lady. It's just common courtesy. It's called having, you know, you know, just class. having some class. Okay, and saying, you know what? I've lived here for several years. Let me introduce you to the staff. Okay. You know, because the staff stays at the White House. You know, the right. guy who's the cook. Let me yeah. show you how everything works, what you do, what buttons work, you know. And it's just a nice formality. And it also shows, you know, to the world, the transition from one president to the next, that we are a true democracy. We accept Michelle Obama physically like you know and they still had them come in i know for a fact they can't stand them yeah. and they still had them come in and, and i mean Tr that's history it's and trump's not even going to the inauguration and dating back to the 1940s the uh, the outgoing president would greet the incoming president on the lawn of the white house shake his hands and welcome to the white house as yeah, as the as same a way, way of, Obama did for them as a as a way of transitioning power, but Trump is just leaving. I'm actually surprised about this because I knew I knew about Trump. I knew Trump would wouldn't have the class, but Melania. I actually kind of liked her. Not saying as a first lady, but like I felt for her, you know, because I also felt like she didn't even know that she was getting herself into. She just thought that she was, you know, coming up with getting with Trump. I don't think she knew she was going to ever be the first lady. So I always kind of had her back with that. But like this right here kind of surprised me. I was really hoping that she would have been like, listen, I don't care what my husband is going to do. I'm going to still be classy and, right. you know, invite Jill Biden in and show her around like, you know, history says you should do. I'm actually surprised and I'm disgusted. Yeah, but when so you're married to like petty, when you're married to like petty Pablo, like a, like a Trump, I can, can you imagine the conversations in the evening? Like where she's like, yeah, I might be considering doing this. And then your husband Trump is like, think again. You know what I mean? I don't know. Do you think, I I, know. I'm just thinking of like, you know, like you're a tenant in a building and you're just like, you want to just, you know, like they're going to like stuff the toilet or like leave dirty stuff around, you know, like, like, a, like, you know, like sometimes like right. tenants who oh. are angry that they have to leave, 
you know, try right. to screw the landlord, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking, like, they're going to be, like, do things like that. Oh, I, de- I definitely think that they about to leave that White House atro- uh, atrocious. That's like, right. They don't have no deposit that they need to get back. That's <laughs> so right. They probably, they're probably going to put all kinds of bad juju. I would have sage. I would have a priest. All kinds of stuff coming up in there the first day. The other thing I was going to say Anything is... about? Yeah. They have five hours from the time that Trump is leaving the White House to get everything fixed up for Biden. How are they going to fix everything up in five hours? How many people do you think are on staff for that? They have know. they have a lot of people on staff. I don't staff. know. But they got to they, they turn around an entire home in five hours. I think that's pretty crazy. That, that's that's really is. Did you see that Elon Musk is now the richest man in the world? Yeah. He has edged past Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. I don't get Tesla. Do you see Teslas all over the place? No, I see well, them I more see, I now. Think, I think that, it's more that so. This is the like biggest car company in the stuff. world. I think it's investments and stuff as well. I, no, it's no, I it's it's it's, 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 te- it's, off of. it's Tesla, and that's, the that's Tesla. How, that's the only way he's making his money. That's so. That's how he became the richest man in the world from Tesla because the stock, the Tesla stock, has gone through the roof like one thousand. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Right, the it's stock, gone. It's gone. The stock has gone through the roof. The but I don't get. Uh, not that I'm a stock analyst. But I don't get how Tesla stock went through the roof because I don't see Teslas all over the place. Apparently, they're making batteries for all, they have contracts to make batteries for a lot of different companies, electric cars, and people think that they're going to have like the, you know, corner of the market on electric car batteries, but still, to be the richest man in the world from electric car batteries? I mean, a lot of people have been getting electric cars. They they have electric car stations at all my friends' apartments in the garages. They have like electric in the garages. Stations. I, was gonna- I, I garages. don't know. A- Amazon. I see Amazon packages every day. I could get Jeff Bezos being the richest man. Bill Gates, by the way, he is the third richest. He's he's only at 132 billion. Uh, Elon Musk God. is at 191 billion dollars. A hundred and ninety one. They're, they're becoming they're becoming a thing. It's gonna be like, you know, where when you when you never see a red car and then you buy a red car and then you see a red car everywhere. That's almost how I feel about Tesla. Uh I'm seeing them more. How, how I'm more, more shock at hundred and ninety one billion dollars. How how do you have a hundred and ninety two billion dollars? One ninety one. Let's not make him richer than he is. A hundred and ninety one <laughs> billion. Dollars, not a billion. Child, not five billion, not ten billion. It's wild. A hundred and ninety-two. Bi- that's like, it's just way. It's way too much. And yo yo, and yo yo, and yo yo. Listen, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing, but Elon Musk is three years younger than me. And I say to myself, <laughs> "Damn, three years young. He's even younger than me." And he's worth yeah. 191 billion. He's gonna live forever. He has enough money to do something to where he can live forever. You know who Olivia Wilde is? She's dating now Harry Styles. Cougar. Yeah, she, you know, she's 36. Styles is 26. And they were oh, holding wow. hands at a wedding in oh. California. So I guess they are now Instagram worthy. And the pair have been filming a psychological thriller, Don't Worry Darling. So. What do you think? Age difference, right. taboo, hey, older woman, younger man. Vanessa, is that you go Cooper. for that? Love Cooper. is love. love I don't know love. about younger. <laughs> Would you what? go She's with a younger man? So that's not big that's time cougar. Great. No, I wouldn't be that's, with someone younger. Well, when you're 26, mm, you're you're still a child. You know what I mean? 20 in your mid 20s, there's a lot of them that are still mm. in college. But so. there's but there's but but I think that's a double standard because there's men who are 36 years old who are dating 26 year old women, and that why is that Thank not you, as big, why is that not as big a deal? Um, it's not that big of a deal because uh, society. Not saying that it's right, but you know usually you'll have the man that is you know the the breadwinner, the one that goes out and makes the money, and then the wife that not saying like I said, not saying that it's right, but you guys asked me a question. This is why we all think that it's different, you know. This is why we all are like side eyeing it is because you're used to seeing the old the but man why older. Can't, why can't an older woman date a younger man? 
10 years she old. Can. Now. She can. She can. Olivia Wilde. But she's Olivia, Olivia Wilde, Wilde, so she can get away Nobody's with it. Said, I don't think anybody is saying that they can't. But you don't you don't see that I, as much. In, in other words, then, if, in other words, also, if it, if Harry Styles was thirty six and Olivia Wilde was twenty six, this wouldn't even be a discussion in Tea Time for Brad. Listen, you, I, I think it's more so. And then, like I said, this is no shade to any older women that do date younger men because I had an older girlfriend before. Um, so that's not that's not what I'm saying. How but old, how much older? So like how much older? Huh? How much older? I was like 18 and she was like 24. It right, wasn't that, that much, wasn't that older, much. But, but I was still in high school. Mm -hmm. So, but, so the thing is we also have grown up or this kid has kind of grown up, you know, in our eyes. Like we've seen him, Harry Styles since he was younger, you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, we see someone that we remember as a child and now we see him with an older, older lady. You know, I think that's why it's newsworthy. I don't think it's because 36 years old, she's mad young. You know, she's still young. Yeah. So. See, I think it's just the woman man thing more than anything. And I think it's a societal thing. I've dated women. I've been in serious relationship with a woman who was 14 years younger than me. And in some respects, she was more mm -hmm. mature than I was. Right. Then there's that part, too. Yeah. I mean, not that I'm not I a mature man, mature but, you know, you? It's, you only see me here. I mean, in you know, real life, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm Uncle Brad here, but yeah. I'm just Brad out there. I'm just there. Brad no, I'm out kidding. there, right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely the gender thing. For sure, it's the gender thing because it's like we're saying, like if the roles were reversed, it wouldn't matter. But I truly believe that we're in a new era where love is really love. And unfortunately, those are all societal point of views that we've always seen it. Well, what? let me just say what the squad is. Denisha Joseph says, old man, darling. I'm not sure what she means by that. Maybe she likes older men. But Linda well, Shaw has a fiance who is much younger than her. And she says they are perfect together. I but can then just... you see how she said, she also said that he, acts, she, he older. acts older. Right. Okay. So it's a, has a lot that's, to that's do, it has thing. a lot to do about maturity as yeah. well. But I can but tell like, you. That's still, that's still saying like, it's like, oh, he's younger, but. He acts older. It's still right. saying that, you know, most ladies like to date an older man. That's what I think. Now, I'll tell you just from an immigration standpoint, when we bring clients into immigration with an older woman, younger man, they are much more suspicious than older man, younger woman. Much, much yeah. more suspicious. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.